Hello. I am tired and I've been working on this a long time. But anyways, here goes. Try to do this video again. I just don't feel like doing this. I've made an app, put an app together called the Oculus CP. CP stands for control panel. I just call it the Oculus CP. And with it, you can control your Oculus Go. You don't need a computer anymore. Uh, you can change the resolution of your Oculus Go. You can back up your apps and settings. You can, what else can you do? You can sideload APKs with this app. You can restore backups that you made of your apps and settings. You can launch the developer settings in Oculus TV. You can also launch regular Android settings in Oculus TV with this app. You can change your CPU and GPU levels from zero to four, four being the maxed out version of it. You can change your screen recording resolution. You can change your screen recording bit rate. You can set your fixed foveated rendering, whatever you want. If you select the option, it'll install the internal resolution apps that I created for the Oculus Go. There is a requirement though, but for those of you who don't have a computer, this is good news. Eh, if you have the required hardware. OTG cable, well, OTG cable. And then the USB charging cable that came with the Oculus Go works fine. The OTG cable actually has to be plugged into your phone or, well, yeah, it's an app for a phone. You need an Android device, okay? What's the catch? It has to be a rooted Android device. Oh, some of you are like, dang it. Well, here's the reason why. Because it uses ADB. It uses a native Android ADB executable. Google used to include that up until 5, like they, they included up to Android 5.0. Problem with that is it's version 1.032, which does not see the Oculus Go. If you have a rooted Android device that has at least Android 5.0 on it and an OTG cable, you can do all the ADB commands you want. My app is really just an ADB GUI and the buttons are just shortcuts for the different commands. I'll show you how to use it right now in, a vi in this video. You can even connect to it wirelessly. Like you physically have to first connect it to your device and then you can press a button so that it connects to it wirelessly. You unplug it and then it's not physically connected. One of the things, one of the issues of having it physically connected is whatever device the OTG cable is plugged into will charge the other device. So your phone will be like, losing charge and sending it, or, or your or Android tablet or, or whatever Android, rooted Android device you have. I even tried it on an S3, an old S3. It worked, although it scaled funny. Uh, it could have just be this custom ROM that I'm using, but it worked. So, all right, I'm gonna show you how to use it. All right, guys, this is the Oculus CP. Here is the first screen, it's the main screen. Let's see, uh, if you wanna know what something does, just long press it and an explanation will pop up for anything. Uh, as you can see, you can set the text resolution. We have five presets, and then you also can enter a custom resolution. Do it at your own risk. People are like, hey, will you send me one for 3072, which I've done before, I've manually set. You can type it in here, see how you like it. Remember, any of these settings will automatically revert when you restart your Go, so nothing here is permanent. Um, we have about, setup, network, backup, advanced, and donate, if you want to say thanks, but you're not required to, of course. Um, on setup, you can download ADB, which if I click on it, just wait, it's downloaded, it and you click on install ADB. There, and now it's installed. Again, any of these, you just long press on, it'll tell you exactly what they do. You want to get into developer settings on your Oculus Go or just regular Android settings. Uh, you can sideload an APK. It tells you where to put the APK. Go back. Um, let's see. Network setup is really cool because you can connect to your Oculus Go wirelessly. Like watch this. If I hit ADB devices, there's nothing. Nothing's attached. So, oh, also, let me show you here. LS USB, if you hit that, it shows you if you have something connected. Nothing's connected, but now I'm going to connect my OTG cable. LS USB, that's the OTG cable. And now I'm going to connect the Go, and I will press LS USB again. And on here it says, you know, VR headset. On a different Android device, it tells me something else. Anyways, so go down to network setup, 
and you click Wi-Fi Auto Connect. It grabs your IP address. It tells you to disconnect the USB cable. And it tries to connect. Now it claims it's connected, but for me, often it doesn't connect. I don't know if it's my router or what it is. You just press the button, press it. See ADB devices, see if it's really connected. It's not. So then you can just click Wi-Fi Connect down below. Because it stores the IP address, I would keep clicking it until it says already connected. Like, hey, stop, it's already connected. See, already connected. Now it should show up. Bam. There we go. You're good. If you click specify IP, that's if the get IP doesn't work. So, um, yeah, just if you have any questions, let me know. Let's see what else do we have? We have backup. You can backup your Oculus Go. You can either just backup the app settings or back up the app settings with the APKs. And at the top, you have to put in a custom path. Like if you have an EXFAT USB thumb drive connected via OTG, you could put that in there. You could connect it and write type the path to it and it would back up to it. And this will take a while. I'm not sure if doing it over Wi-Fi is any slower or not because I don't think it will be, but it could be. It could be faster. You can restore your backup files. I personally would recommend doing a backup file of your APKs plus the settings files because if you're transferring from one go to another or you're doing a factory reset or something like that, the settings, you won't necessarily remember where you, what apps the settings were for. So with this way, it'll just install everything at once. Everything you backed up, it'll restore at once. Let's see, what else do we have? We have the donate button, advanced. With this, you can change the GPU level, like watch this, change it to four. It's gonna send it, okay. It was successfully sent. You can change the recording uh, settings. The top one is actually 512. The default is 1024. You can change the recording megabits per second. What do you want? The default is five. You can put like 15. And now it'll record at 15 megabits per second. Some people like to do pretty high, like 80. Um, set fixed foveated rendering. The highest amount is three. You can click on that. There you go. Hit back. All right. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, I worked really, really hard on this app, and I hope you guys find it useful. All right, there it is. I hope you guys find this app useful. I spent the better part of a month working on it. It's really just a GUI for ADB, and if you have Magisk installed. If you have a rooted Android device with Magisk, uh, it has an ADB module. So just install that instead and this app will still work with it. So you don't need to install the ADB that this one installs. Magisk has a newer version and it's built in. And in fact, I couldn't get this to work on one that had Magisk installed. I had to use the Magisk ADB module and then everything else worked. So if you guys like this, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. If you have any questions or whatnot, just give me, just let me know in the comments or on Reddit. If you guys like this or you have any suggestions, please let me know. I have some other things I would like to do with it toward the backup options, but it might be a little over my head. So, all right, thanks, that's it. You guys have a good one.